Face masks have been used for more than 100 years in Japan, during which time they were used against viruses, disasters, and more. With billions of masks worn from 2011 to 2019, even before COVID, masks had already become normalized. Following the pandemic, Japanese people are both unable and unwilling to put down their masks. But does this bring any dangers? Some, such as the Japan Reporter, make big claims about the dangers of face masks and their potential effects on child development. But are these really true? This is the history of masks in Japan, how masks became the new normal. It all began around 1919 with the Spanish flu. The Central Sanitary Bureau of Japan recommended mask wearing, along with vaccination and gargling, as measures against the flu. Interestingly, masks were also worn in other countries as well, such as the US, where mask wearing in public was made mandatory in some cities, as well as social distancing measures with people allowed to meet publicly, granted they wore masks. The big difference, however, was that as soon as the Spanish flu was over, the US disposed of their masks and didn't look back. Whereas Japan kept using masks for two reasons. Firstly, before masks, there were established rituals for flu-like illnesses, such as paper stickers known as harigami, faith healing and naming the flu in a humanized way. For those wishing to drive out these old practices, masks appeared as a progressive substitute worthy of promotion. Secondarily, the mask fit neatly within the worldview of Shintoism, of purity and pollution, where infection was understood as originating from miasma as opposed to viruses. With masks introduced to the public, though not widely used as seen today, it didn't take more than four years before they would be used again in 1923, but for a very different reason. The Great Kanto Earthquake, a massive earthquake which led to a 12 meter high tsunami followed by an all-encompassing fire roaring through the wooden houses of Yokohama and Tokyo. During this terrible disaster with a death toll of about 140,000 people, masks were used as a way to protect against ash and smoke, which showed the early signs of the mask as more than an antiviral protector. Around the same period, the first trademark mask, the Kotobuki mask, was also registered by Uchiyama Takeshi. In 1934, masks were again used in response to the second flu outbreak. This time, citizens were encouraged to wear masks on public transport, in theaters, and any other places where people gathered. People without masks were even denied entry in some places, with posters saying no mask equals a death wish. Masks were likewise encouraged by the government during various flu outbreaks throughout the 20th century. More interestingly, masks became used for yet another different reason around 1970, namely to protect against hay fever and pollen. Mask usage increased even more in response to the 2003 SARS outbreak and the 2004 avian flu outbreak, all culminating in the 2009 swine flu epidemic. During the swine flu epidemic, train personnel were instructed to wear masks and passengers encouraged to do so. In various companies and businesses, such as banks and restaurants, with customer interaction, they encouraged their employees to wear masks as well. Children in school were also instructed to wear masks. As a result, wearing masks in public became a social norm, especially in commuter trains, this being the tipping point for the transition from people focusing on those wearing masks to focusing on those who don't. A great contributing factor to this development was the workplace enforcement of mask wearing, since employees given the unique Japanese corporate social hierarchy could, or rather would, under next to no circumstances defy or protest the enforcement of mask wearing by their employers or superiors. Because, as one employee put it, my company is forcing everyone to wear them all day from the moment one leaves the house to when one gets back home. It feels like I'm suffocating, all the while keeping a microbe culture adhered to my face and feeding it warmth and moisture with my own breath. So naturally, I hate it. A lot. But when my pace on the line, I have no choice but to comply. At least, while the bosses are looking. A survey conducted after the 2009 epidemic found that around 12% of respondents reported regular mask wearing. But following the 2011 Fukushima disaster, people began using masks to defend against radioactive particles, cementing the mask as an all-purpose personal protection device. This led mask production and usage to explode following 2011, as seen in the following numbers of masks produced. In 2011, Japan produced around 0.84 billion masks, followed by 2.87 billion in 2012. 
After the explosive growth from 2011 to 2012, there was a steady annual increase until 2019, where production volume had reached 6.46 billion. With the introduction of COVID-19 to Japan in the beginning of 2020, the produced volume exploded, more than doubling to almost 13 billion. These numbers include both domestic production volume as well as import volume, and does not directly convert to the number of masks worn. However, it does paint a picture of the Japanese face mask market, its general upgoing trend and spread in Japanese society. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, even after mask wearing in public spaces was no longer compulsory, Japanese people have kept wearing them, even when the government told them not to in order to avoid heat stroke. This is the result of peer pressure and group conformity, which reigns supreme in a collectivist society like Japan. But after years of constant mask wearing, we're beginning to see the consequences. First, I need to address what a YouTube channel called The Japan Reporter said in one of his video called Japanese people are becoming mask dependent from about half a year ago. Overall, it's a great video and I love his channel in general, but this one claim I have to question. He claimed that masks reduce the development of children based on a 2021 study made by Brown University and he quoted an article from wishtv.com. I thought that sounded both extremely interesting, if true, but also really worrisome, and so I went to look for that paper. This is that research paper and I will link it below. The study did show children born during the pandemic having lower cognitive scores than those from before. The only mention of masks in the paper as a potential cause of anything was when the researchers would wear masks as they interacted with the children. But even in this scenario, they wrote that the masks having any sort of effect was highly unlikely. I will also link to an article from the National Geographic below, which addresses various concerns people have about face masks, such as breathing, language development, and social development etc. and why most of these worries are indeed unfounded. I do however agree with Nabata's other point in his video, Nabata being the Japan reporter, when it comes to the psychological effects of masks on young people and children especially in Japan. As shown by a recent trend where masks are referred to as face underwear, a point I also spoke on in a previous video of mine. It is called face underwear because removing it feels like undressing. And so considering how especially teenagers are really aware of their peers and when you take into consideration how in Japan you're always aware of your surroundings, I almost see no reason to expect that school children and teenagers would not develop insecurities and challenges from having constantly hit their faces for years. According to studies, children feel anxious and exposed at the thought of showing others their face without a mask with as many as 66% of teenage girls feeling uncomfortable not wearing a mask, and an entire 61% of those 66 saying that it's because they feel uncomfortable showing their face, as opposed to for protection. Another figure that comes with excessive mask wearing is the danger of heat stroke in the very humid and hot Japanese summers. That is to say, there are real dangers associated with excessive mask wearing. So while Japan's history with masks is different from the rest of the world and they have had certain benefits over the years, it would seem beyond time they began to scale things back.